Welcome to the Let's Quit Podcast. Quitting is not always a bad thing. If you have the right mindset, quitting can be the most powerful tool you have on your journey to success. It's certainly been helpful for us. Whether it's flying through hurricanes, building our businesses, or just trying to get to bed on time, we're always trying to level up and improve our lives. This is the show where we share the lessons, experiences, and friends that have helped us live this incredible life. So let's quit the bad and grow the good together. All right, welcome back to the podcast. This week, Jenny and I are pleased to share with you our good friend and Jenny's brother, Closer Eric. than a friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Eric has been with us for a couple months now, um, just living with us, working on the woodworking business together. And um, yeah, he, he shares a wealth of experience, even though he's young. You're what, 21? Yep. 21. He's experienced quite a bit in life. Eric's background is mostly wrestling. So Got a big list here. In third place, this is just the highlights, but he was third place in Wisconsin State Wrestling. He wrestled for Ben Askren and used to water his grass. Is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> so yes. intimate friends there. Played disc golf a few times, which I want to hear more about that. Yeah. But Good time. if you don't uh, know who he is, he's an Olympic wrestler. Right. He's a national All-American, um, just a cool dude, and we're honored to have him working yes. with us. And uh, yeah, we just decided to give him his own podcast episode because frankly, we're out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> we're never out of ideas. But anyway, um, let's just jump into the conversation. So our first question we always ask our guests, Jenny. Do you remember how we met? Well, <laughs> what's your earliest childhood memory of Jenny? Uh, well, I remember her tying me to a chair. Oh, and then I fell no. down the stairs as a kid. <laughs> this that, was, that was entirely my fault. That was as a, as a four-year-old, you know. That's your earliest ideas. childhood memory? Do you remember meeting I think me? So. Of me? I remember meeting you. Yeah, you came you like? came at Christmas. Um and I remember that we were hanging ornaments on the tree and everything, listening to Christmas music. And what was it? Oh, we couldn't get the star on top of the tree. <laughs> we all weren't tall enough. And the stepladder wasn't wasn't tall enough either. So you were the you were the special one who <laughs> Who put the star on top of the Christmas tree that year? I do remember that. Yeah. I remember your dad also saying that like that was the biggest Christmas tree they had bought in a long time. Nope, we are so. not a family of very tall people. We no. are. Uh, Davis is definitely the tallest out of. And I'm all not that us. tall. I'm like five eleven and a half. I'm not even six foot. So yeah. most people oh. would round six feet. Well, just take it. Take TikTok it. TikTok told me I couldn't wind. do that. TikTok told me five eleven is like. A world different than six foot. If we all took our advice from TikTok, we would not be. Very oh no! Far. If you're five eleven, you round up to six foot, and six is greater than five, so you might as well just round up to six two. I mean, so, yeah, that yeah. sounds <laughs> sounds legit. So, cool. So you remember Davis helping out the family, and then your memory of me is tying you to a chair. Sounds about right. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not reverse roles or anything. Oh right, my god! Right. Oh well, cool. Um, so. And just very briefly, would you like to introduce yourself to the guests? Let them know who you are, what you're about, um, what you're looking forward to in the future. Just give everybody a big snapshot of who is Eric. Ah, uh, yeah. So basically, I've been in Wisconsin my whole life. We, our family, fish, deer hunt all the time. Um, I've been wrestling for 13 years. That was a main con consumption of my life. Uh, I wrestled in college for a bit. And, um, along with that, I ended up getting a shoulder surgery and tried to come back from it, ended up winning a tournament and stopped my wrestling career just because it was still bothering me. So then, uh, Jenny and Davis had the great idea of coming down here and helping them out with, with the business and thought it'd be a great idea, kind of a vacation too for a little <laughs> bit, but it's been a lot of work. It's been a lot of fun. So yeah. you were actually a business major, yes, correct? Yes, business so management. You, yes. Yeah. So have... Is your degree helping you at all? Uh, <laughs> you don't have to incriminate yourself. But. Well, there are there are some classes I do enjoy more than others. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I mean, you've helped us like work through some things. Like we've Jenny and I have like come up with like issues or whatever in the business, and you're like, oh, this is just like this class. So you have helped us quite mm -hmm. a bit in some areas. So I wouldn't say your education is totally a waste. No, it's now that I'm you know a year away from graduating, I definitely get more valued content out of my classes mm. so every everything that i've given with like advice is from my very recent classes nice. otherwise it's just all gen eds and 
I, I mean, got to just pass those. Yeah. yeah. You know, really keep them up, up in the brain. So. Yeah. yeah. So the cool part about it, all this, too, is like Eric is a natural businessman, I would say. I feel like he's got the brain to like think that way. Um, and which, the emotional intelligence, too. Like, yes. This guy is absolutely fearless. Like anybody we ask him to talk to, he's just like, okay, and he just walks right up to him. So <laughs> definitely, definitely envious of that skill and that trait. Um, but yeah, so I mean, that's that's Eric from our perspective. Like he's just a cool dude and we wanted him on our team so the Not timing right. was right so he just came down for the summer and we're we're begging him to stay longer so <laughs> we'll see time. how it pans out but yeah so um let's just jump right into your title topic so would you like to explain what your topic is what you chose obviously you guys saw the title of this episode is called quit expecting too much um would you like to just unpack what you mean by that yeah so obviously uh expecting too much so a lot of times when we're I mean, even just an everyday conversation we may just expect too much out of that person as of value or certain situations and we get down this road of just really wanting this person to basically just give us the world and we kind of just need to turn the boat and just realize like we are just talking to this person and might just get a good conversation out of it and that's it instead of walking away from that conversation feeling we ruined ourselves just for expecting too much yeah so do you have any stories or anything like that of um situations where you've gone through that to learn that lesson yeah um so we went to that rodeo auction and mm -hmm. we had just built this kitchen table and i had a lot of pride in it because <laughs> davis let me kind of run with it a little bit and instead of telling me hey you're kind of doing that wrong he let me make the mistake first <laughs> and then <laughs> use it as a teaching point so i had i had some stake in the table just because i felt like yeah i i built this thing like, <laughs> it's pretty great you did man like yeah I, you basically you part, built that thing yeah but i mean i kind of like yes we were donating it and it was a great great thing that we did but i also kind of wanted to get that table into some other people's homes too you know, it's, that's always something that I've got in the back of my head. So I definitely went into that event saying, you know what, I'm going to be able to provide some value to people by providing them with a brand new kitchen table that I can build with my own two hands. And you wanted to sell more than just the auction, right? Like, oh yeah, you were hoping that like the, the auction would be so popular that you could maybe undercut, sell a few more tables under the table. Yeah. So hey, maybe you didn't get this one, but yep. you, we, I'll sell you another one. Yeah. Yep. So how did that, how did that go? It didn't go well. <laughs> I talked, I, I think I tried to count it in my head and I talked to about over 40 or 45 people and some of them just didn't want to talk and a lot of them just wanted to have a conversation and I maybe, I mean, I handed out a lot of business cards, but I didn't really sell anything. So I, I expected too much out of the event and I kind of expected too much out of myself to where we came out of that event and I didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel good about like my selling abilities and just my conversation abilities out, out of anything. And I should have, I should have turned the boat and said, what I want to get out of this is for people to recognize our company. I want them to know who we are and know who I am. And I, I just want to talk to these people, get to know them, have some great conversations and hopefully they give us a phone call when they ever need anything. Right. So um, I have the benefit of seeing you at a couple of days after the auction. You were kind of quiet for a couple of days. Yeah. Like what was going through your head? What like what were the thoughts that just kept popping in your head? Like even if you knew they were false, like what was what was your brain telling you? Like you spent you mentioned that like you doubted your sales abilities. Like what was going on in your head? Yeah, I I got humbled. Um, I, I had another sales job to where I just kind of took off with it and it wasn't really hard to take off with it so that's kind of where i got a lot of my confidence but when i when i got humbled i i was kind of thinking like i i was looking back into very distinct conversations that i was having with people and just rethinking like what should i have said that would have gone better and i was i felt like i was over analyzing what i had said rather than looking at it and, and just say hey i had a great conversation with him he if he may remember me, he may not. 
but hopefully he does. And I provided value in just letting him know who we are and letting them know who Jenny Davis are. So, yeah, yeah. So if we were to go to another event almost identical in the future, what would your expectations be for that event versus, I mean, but I think we talked, I think the number was 10. I think the number, like you were excited to sell at least 10 kitchen tables yeah. at this thing, which sounds funny and we're laughing about it now. But at the time, like we were dead serious. We, were we thought we were going to. We're going to sell some tables. So what would you, what would you do differently? What are your expectations now going forward? Yeah, my, my expectations that I would set for myself, I, I would, I need myself to slow down. I, it's just who I am with my whole wrestling career and everything. I get super sped up and I, I just kind of go crazy, especially in my head. Like, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to sell more than 10 tables, but if we were going to go to another event, I, instead of limiting myself to how much i want to sell i would create the expectation i want to talk to this many people i mean and it can just be as simple as walking up to somebody and saying hey my, my name's eric nice to meet you and just getting to know them i mean just cold introduction that's all it really takes and that's what i would kind of that would be my goal going into an event like that is just talk to as many people as i can get to know them get have them get to know me and and the company so. Right. And in a very practical sense, too, like with a goal of selling 10 kitchen tables, which sounds like a wildly ridiculous idea. But if it wasn't, if we showed up there and you sold your 10 tables like in five minutes, you'd you'd wipe your hands and probably say, you know what? I did good for the day. You, I, you wouldn't try as hard. Mm -hmm. yep. But if you have the goal of just meeting people and talking to people, you're opening up more ability to sell more than 10 tables. Exactly. Because yeah. then you're not tying your expectations to a number, you're tying it to having good conversations. Right, because at this event, right. like, so just a little bit of background, we may have talked about this in the last podcast, but this event turned out to not, like, be the best for fostering, like, deep conversations or, you know, a whole lot of sales, which is totally fine. But, like, had it been an event where it, like, was very sales-focused and it was easy to, like, get people to bite on this kitchen table, then, yeah, you probably could have done more than 10 tables, you know? Yeah. But that's, yeah, but we didn't know what, what the vibe of this auction was going right. to be until we showed up. So, in order to, like, improve your upside and limit your downside, your goal, I think, appropriately should be, like, I'm going to have a conversation with people. I'm not going to sell people. And then... Yeah, it's much easier to manage your own emotions after that. Exactly. Yep. So I, I came out of the event and I wasn't, I wasn't very happy with how I did. And I was, I mean, like I said, I was overanalyzing what I said to very, you know, distinct individuals. I could remember their faces and, and exactly none of us have ever done that. <laughs> yeah, I never. <laughs> no, overthink no, about nobody what I ever said. overthinks. And I think it's a point of longevity too, because when you came out of that event, like, what if we had had two events lined up? What if after we came out of that auction, we had to like turn right around and go to our next one 30 oh. minutes later would you have been in a spot where you could have like sold more people <laughs> i don't i don't really think so no yeah and the thing is with my wrestling career I'll, a lot of it's bounce back you wrestle a lot of tournaments mm -hmm. you lose a hard a hard fought match but you got to wrestle in 20 minutes so you got to mm -hmm. bounce you got to bounce right back and be ready to win another match i and with that event if we would have had to go to a second one i don't know if i would have been able to because i would have been so focused on what had happened that I wouldn't have been able to keep moving forward and look forward to the event and say, hey, this is what I need to change. I would have needed that time to really get, get my mind right. Right. Whereas if you would have gotten it right beforehand, like, hey, maybe, and your goal was to just talk to people, we could have turned around and done a second one. And you'd be like, all right, absolutely. cool, just time to talk to more people. Yep, absolutely. Would have talked to a lot more people, handed out a lot more business cards, just tell them about who we are. And that's why, if you've been following us on the YouTube channel, like our goal is not to sell cutting boards every week. Like Jenny's goal for sales is literally just to explain what we do to three people a week. Yeah. That is the whole goal of the sales department is, hey, you can introduce yourself to three people. You've done your weekly job. Like that's it. So it was so funny, actually. Like I have a quick side story on this because this literally just happened this week. Um, I was dropping off some charcuterie boards to a realtor that had purchased them from us in a bulk order. I was just dropping them off at her office and there was somebody else. She wasn't there. So there was another person who worked for her sitting in her building and uh, she let me in. I said, hey, hi, nice to meet you. And then I turned around and I was like, no, no, my goal is to tell like three people a week about us. Am I going to sell this lady's charcuterie board right here, right now? Probably not. But I can take this opportunity to say, hey, like I didn't get your name. Oh, nice to meet you. My name's Jenny. My husband and I own this company that I'm dropping these boxes off for. You know, she asks the question, oh, what do you build? I show her a quick picture and then I'm out the door. And before you know it, I've got another person 
like who knows about us who had i not made the effort would not have known about us and that made me feel so accomplished you know like five months ago i would not have felt accomplishment from just telling some random lady who worked in an office what we do but i was like hey yes like i knocked a person off my list way to go yeah so are there any other topics or points you wanted to make about like uh tempering your expectations like going into something like when you're setting a big goal yeah um before going into like an event like we had or a task or even just a regular conversation um just focus on on the opportunity of learning whether you're just learning about that person and what they do and sharing what you do or uh just learning about the event and the ins and outs of how it goes and kind of learning the vibe of it just focus on learning and absorbing as much information as you can so that you can provide that value for yourself so that going into something in the future you can do it better um right and that's not to say that you don't set a big goal mm -hmm. like oh because we want to make sure that we balance here right so you're not saying don't have big goals and big dreams you're just saying set a big goal and then set a low threshold for yourself to achieve it that exactly yep okay yeah again if you continually do the small steps that you need over time you'll build you'll achieve your goal exactly right so cool anything else what else can we do this week to not expect so before starting a task or you know really just starting anything outline your priorities outline what you want to get done with that task whether it's i mean again going to an event having a conversation with somebody what do you what do you want to really get out of it and if you find yourself going down that rabbit hole you need to turn the boat and say okay i'm expecting much here i can't go to this event and send and sell 10 kitchen tables and feel feel bad after it for a couple days i need to go into the saying hey i'm going to introduce myself to this guy i'm going to do this task and i'm going to get my value out of it and he's going to walk away knowing who i am and what i do yeah i think it's perfectly appropriate i mean also like at the end of the day we say we want sales but we really don't want to make money like our goal is not making money our goal is building a relationship with the customer so that they buy a lot of things from us very long term and they think positive things they think about our company i mean everybody's bought something that was really expensive and then you hated that company ever since right because you felt like it was a waste of money or the product wasn't as great as you thought it was like that's not what we're doing at all we're not looking for a quick sale we're trying to like build a relationship long term with these customers which starts with an introduction it starts yep. with getting to know their name and their spouse's name and their kid's mm -hmm. name and their hobbies and their interests yeah, if I sell them some charcuterie boards or a kitchen table, that's great. But my goal here is to bring people together with the products that we offer. Because you better believe when they do need one of your products, they're going, you know, who they're going straight to. Not the person who has no idea that they have a son named, you know, Jimmy. It's going to be the person that talked to him for 25 minutes about their life. Yep, absolutely. So, well, cool. Um, these are some great lessons, man. It's just, it's incredible to see somebody like Eric, who's so young, that has yeah. learned these lessons. like I. You can't put it all in a like 30 minute podcast, but right. like the maturity and just the, the, the space where your head is at right now is light years ahead of other people your age and people that we've met and talked to. So it's really encouraging to hear that you've already learned like concepts of extreme accountability and stuff like that in large part, I think, to your wrestling career, because Definitely. if you do anything at a high level, you have to be accountable to reality. You can't hide from your own fears. You can't. Yeah. Like you can't rationalize your way out of hard work like 99% of American middle class people do. Um, guilty. Like we, Jenny and I did it for years. I think back so. to when I was 21, I was like not learning, taking full responsibility. I was like, I mean, I was learning some of that through the military, but not to this level at yeah. all. I mean, even the military like hides it at some degree, yeah. like responsibility, like overlapping responsibilities so that no one person actually has to. Yeah, you know, have all the responsibility, job. right? Because that's risky, <laughs> right? So even the military doesn't teach as extreme accountability as what I think a, a entrepreneur and a business owner needs to have. So anyway, it's just been a pleasure having you here and getting to know you. Um, we'd love to have you on more episodes of the podcast in the future if you're open to that. Of course. Um, but we just wanted to give you a nice, easy um, welcome to the world of podcasting, podcasting and, and talking in front of a camera. Right. <laughs> so. Well, cool. Well, we're going to record a little bit extra for the guys and girls in the stud stack. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. And uh, if you'd like to support us, we really appreciate our patrons. So if you'd like to go to patreon.com slash Jenny Davis, 
pick the tier that uh, fits you best, and uh, we would love your financial support. Yes. Or even if you just want to leave a review, we would appreciate that too. Let us uh, let us know what you think. You can send us an email at letsquitpodcast at gmail.com if you ever have a question that you'd like us to answer or anything like that. Uh, or just share it with your friends. That helps too. Yep. So um, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.